you know, you hear that Cory Booker, uh, Kamala Harris, Kirsten Gillibrand, they're all, you know, now they're not taking any corporate PAC money. And all of a sudden they've seen the progressive light. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, they are learning. They're, they're moving over to the, the Bernie uh, the Bernie side of things. <laughs> oh, God. Sometimes it's just too easy. Sometimes uh, it's just too easy. Guess who's calling Wall Street? You'll be shocked. Wall Street executives are hearing from Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, and other Democrats as they gouge interest in possible 2020 presidential campaigns. Shock, shock, shock. And Kamala Harris is now on cable news uh, promoting her new book, which I think is her soft launch for a presidential campaign. Wall Street executives have heard from several potential 2020 Democratic candidates for president, including Cory Booker, and Kamala Harris, CNBC has learned. I did a story on Sunday how Kirsten Gillibrand, New York senator, is one of them. The latest developments come as the Democrats campaign to unseat Donald Trump uh, begins a year before the first contest of the presidential primary season with contenders attempting to line up backing from donors and fundraisers. The revelation of communications between Wall Street donors and possible Democratic candidates threatens to exacerbate tension between the liberal wing of the party, which is increasingly outspoken, against the influence of corporate money in politics and moderates who are seen as more business friendly. That's that's a kind way of saying it. A CNBC report last week about Kirsten Gillibrand's outreach to Wall Street triggered outrage on the left. Billionaire and Blackstone chief operating officer Jonathan Gray, Robert Wolf, CEO and founder of economic advisory firm 32 Advisors, and Mark Galagli, a founder of private investment firm Center Bridge Partners, are just a few of the Democratic financiers who have spoken with 2020 hopefuls about a, ra about a wide range of topics, including the upcoming campaign, according to people with direct knowledge of the matter. Wolf, a former advisor to President Barack Obama, including as a member of the President's Economic Advisory Board, said he had been in touch with 2020 hopefuls but declined to name the individual lawmakers. Sadly, um, this is what CNBC was reporting, apparently... Elizabeth Warren uh, took some meetings as well uh, in New York in recent months with, I uh, believe, NASDAQ executives. Let's see. Quote, I am meeting with possible candidates often, but don't want to name names until he or she announces, he said. However, people familiar with the talk say Wolf's contact list has included Gillibrand, along with Booker and Harris. Wolf has a history of backing the three senators. He wrote a check to Gillibrand for 2700 in 2018 and donated to Harris's campaign in 2016. In 2014, he backed Booker's Senate campaign. So what's amazing about this, what's amazing about this, first of all, can I just say, I'm not, I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking Kamala Harris for any other reason than her policies, but Kamala Harris just became a senator in 2000. Uh, she started in 2017. Frankly, I think we all got hoodwinked by Barack Obama, but Barack Obama had just become a senator. He started in 2005. He was a senator in 2005 and 2006, and then he ran for president in 2007. So Kamala Harris has the right to do that. But has any, can anyone tell me what Kamala Harris has done as a senator to qualify her to run for president? I don't know. I'm not against somebody running for president who's not been in office for 20 years, I think it's fine to run for president if you, you know, have been in office for a short time. But two years? I, I don't understand why nobody's saying, well, what exactly have you done, Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris has been painted, has been painted as progressive. She was painted that way when she ran for Senate in California. She's been painted that way as a, as a, um, senator for two years. If you say anything about Kamala Harris, you're a racist and you're a sexist. So I don't care because I'm just going to focus on her policy and who she takes money with. If people want to call me a racist and a sexist, they can. I don't care if she's purple. I don't care what sex she is. It's about policy and it's about the money you're taking. So she's been, she's, she's been in office, Kamala Harris, since 2017. So she's been in office two years. Okay. Kamala Harris is being painted as a progressive. Well, in two years, let's see how progressive 
Kamala Harris is. And I don't know why Open Secrets has her as 2015 to 2018. Uh, they might be they might be adding in her campaign donations when she ran for senator, but she assumed office at the beginning of 2017. In two years, or two and a half years, she's taken 2.2 million dollars from financial attorneys. As I always tell you, when you look at that, um, when you look at that category at the top, lawyers and law firms, that's not lawyers for the ACLU folks. That ain't lawyers for the ACLU. Those are lawyers that re- represent big finance and big banks. Those are lawyers that represent the financial industry. 2.2 million in two years. Women's issues, almost a million dollars. Not knocking women's issues, but part, uh, when you see women's issues, if you read closer, a lot of that is Emily's List and Planned Parenthood. As far as I know, Emily's List is against Medicare for All. So that's a problem. She has gotten $770,000 in two years from Wall Street. $575,000 from real estate. Big real estate developers who are basically the reason we have the gentrification we have. 453000 from business services. Uh, this is a lot of money to get from those special interests in only two and a half years. When you're talking, you're getting $2.2 million from lawyers, financial lawyers that represent big banks and big, big financial companies and hedge funds. You're getting $770,000 from Wall Street and you want to talk about, you know, that's a lot of money in two years. And it makes sense because if you're not familiar with this story, guess who Kamala Harris met with in the Hamptons in the summer of 2017? She had just become senator. She had just become a senator that year. She met in the Hamptons here on Long Island, which some of the wealthiest folks in the, in the country have summer homes in the Hamptons. She met in the Hamptons in the summer of 2017 with Hillary Clinton's top campaign donors. I don't know, I, I, you know, obviously the corporate media lives in their own bubble of propaganda, and to them, that's progressive. To everybody else, that's disqualifying. That's disqualifying. You cannot, you cannot be meeting with Hillary Clinton's top donors in the Hamptons five minutes after you become a senator. You cannot, you cannot be taking almost a million dollars from Wall Street in Two years, $2.2 million from hedge funds, financial lawyers in two years. And then go on talking about the middle class. And we need to take it, you know, for the working people. And we're going to take it to Trump. She is a younger, she is a younger Hillary Clinton. I don't, I have nothing against Kamala Harris personally. I think she... The people of California voted for her, and that's fine. But on policy, she she is not a progressive. And you're not going to hear that in the corporate media. And if she runs, which I think she's going to, you're going to hear the same things we always hear. Progressive platitudes about, clo- you know, helping the middle class, you know, recapturing the middle class, taking it to Trump, doing, for, doing things for the working people, climate change. Well, Kamala Harris, the people that... Flooded, flooded money and, and, and gifted you with money from the heavens, uh, they're not exactly down with that message. So that's Kamala Harris. And obviously, Cory Booker, I don't need to tell you. You already know. I mean, Cory Booker, Wall Street Cory, 3 million financial lawyers, almost 3 million, 2.7, eh, that round to 2.8, 2. 2.8 million from Wall Street. 1.4 million from big real estate that's tr- that's gentrifying New York. I mean, it's not hard. Follow the money. And now these people who are taking the no corporate corporate PAC money pledge. Well, Beto O'Rourke took the no corporate PAC money pledge. And you want to know something? Then he did fundraisers with fossil fuel lobbyists, as I reported during the Texas Senate uh, campaign. He was doing fundraisers with big fossil fuel lobbyists. He was taking money from fossil fuel executives, maybe not the corporate PACs, but he was taking money from fossil fuel executives. He voted in 2018 to deregulate Wall Street. 
You could you could have a no PAC pledge and not take corporate PAC money and still be kowtowing and bending the knee to Wall Street and fossil fuel companies and big pharma. So sorry. And by the way, Trump is going to do the same thing to them if they were became the Democratic nominee. Trump is still going to pretend that he's somehow a populist. He's going to call Cory Booker a puppet. He's going to call Kamala Harris a puppet. He's going to call Kirsten Gillibrand a, cu- a puppet, Joe Biden a puppet, because all of them are puppets. You're not going to hear from CNN, MSNBC, The New York Times that these are corporatists. You're not going to hear that they're taking meetings and begging Wall Street. They're calling Wall Street to see if Wall Street will fund their campaign over the other candidates. That's what they're doing. They're dialing for dollars and seeing if Wall Street will be their 2020 sugar daddies. That's that's what they're doing. So I don't want to hear from Kamala Harris or Cory Booker. And by the way, I am not going to hesitate to cover them critically. And if people, if Neera Tandon and Third Way and David Brock and the corporate journalists want to call me or Jimmy or Kyle or Lee or Jamal or whoever, a racist or a sexist, I don't give a shit because it's all propaganda. It's all distraction and def- and deflection. I'm a big fan of Nina Turner, not because she's black, but because she's right. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're white. What do you stand for? What do you stand for? Do you stand for the working people or do you stand for the bankers? Do you stand for the fossil fuel executives? Do you stand for Wall Street? Do you stand for Big Pharma? Fossil fuel companies, real estate developers, Silicon Valley, Mark Zuckerberg. Who do you stand for? And if you're Nina Turner, I don't love you because you're black. I love you because you're righteous. And if you're Kamala Harris, I don't support you. I don't support you, not because you're black, not because you're a woman, but because you're bought off. And what bothers me the most is bought off people that pretend to be progressive. You know what? If you think Wall Street is a righteous, if you think Wall Street is a righteous, uh, you know, street, and they do a lot for the working people, then you make that argument. But don't pretend otherwise. Same thing for Cory Booker. 